All right, boys, welcome back to the channel. How is it going? And we are back here with episode 48 of our Winnipeg Jets franchise mode, almost at that half a century mark for this uh, series, which has been a crazy one. I mean, I think it's the best series that I've put on the channel, if I may say so myself. Um, very good series, lots of storylines to go through, um, and great things have been happening. But if you missed out on the last one, we were on pace for a 62 win season. It would be the first time the Jets have done it. It would be our best season of all time. So we're going to look to continue that pace in this one. But before we do that, let's get to the comments and see what we were saying down there. We have a couple of comments from Alexander. First up, he is saying, to trade a marginal prospect to Tampa Bay for Philip Doust, and this would just be to help out Tampa Bay. So if we look at their lines right now, we see Philip Doust is on the fourth line, and the only reason we want to pick him up is to basically give a, a shot here to Junior Callahan, who has been absolutely stymied on the fourth line. Now, granted, Philip Doust is also on the fourth line, so I'm not sure if it's going to actually increase Callahan's uh, production. And George Lowe here, who was our former prospect, who we traded for uh, the fourth round pick as well, I think. Think. Anyways, he's over here, um, and so he's getting a shot on the third line. I'm not sure why Junior Callahan isn't getting a shot. I guess because he's lower than the overall of Liam Greentree, but uh, this is a pretty idiotic uh, move by Tampa. So we're going to give them a prospect for Philip Dow, see if that changes their lineup composition at all. Maybe, uh, I don't know, but it's probably not going to. They're probably just going to call somebody up, right? Yeah, it's, no, Mikhail Buninovs is here, White Kaiser, why does that name sound so familiar? I don't know. Um, Phil Bennett, these are both defensemen, so I think these are their lines. I don't think actually trading for Philip Dowse is going to do anything. They're just going to call somebody up from the AHL, so I think maybe I'll leave that for now because Philip Dowse is on the fourth line, George Lowe's on the third line, and Junior Callahan is still on the fourth line, so taking Philip Dowse is not going to move Callahan up in the lineup at all. So now we get to some lineup combinations, and we're going to try Dane Matheson on the second line. We're still an amazing team, so if things go wrong, I can switch up Meech for Matheson, uh, just like I did in the last one. But to start it off, we're going to start with Matheson on the second line, just because he's been playing so well. He has 20 goals in 41 games as a rookie. Uh, Brendan Meech, on the other hand, slowed down quite a bit after his strong start, 23 points in 41 games. Still not bad whatsoever, um, but we're going we're gonna to play Dane Matheson on the second line, and in return, Brendan Meech is going to get some second line power play time here instead of Dane Matheson who was there before. I also went ahead and switched Matt Svensson to his um, his right side um, to have maybe see if that can help him pass the puck a little more. I did the same thing with Aiden Stempniak. So nobody's on their strong sides here on the power play. We'll see what that looks like. Um, Alex asked to see Howard Quenville stats. So here they are. Um, really more of a playmaker to be honest than anything else. His shooting is almost his worst attribute, uh, let alone of course the defense or the, sorry the skating which Every prospect has horrible skating for some reason in this game. His defense is actually amazing. He could be a penalty killer if we wanted to, but our penalty kill is not too bad. He's very physical as well at 5'11", so like what I see out of Howard Quenville, not the sniper that we uh, thought he was going to be, but 3.5 stars is somewhat respectable. He, can, uh, he knows what he's doing with the puck in his hands at the very least. So, yeah, boys, I mean, I just kind of skimmed through the comments because really not too much there. I mean, we are an absolute wagon this year, so let's just see if we can't keep that rolling. I have to resend out my scouts January 20th, so we'll watch the Nashville game, or actually, I'll sim past the Nashville game, and then we'll see what the scouts are saying. Obviously, I'll just sim past that for you guys. Uh, we lose 7-4 to Nashville. Let me do the scouts, and then I'll be right back. So here's something I'm just going to keep an eye on, boys, is Dane Matheson is a plus 9 right now. Brendan Meech is a plus 11, so I'm just going to keep those two numbers in mind. I'm going to go a couple of games here, see how the team is looking chemistry-wise, and by that I mean what are our results looking like when Dane Matheson's on the second line compared to Brendan Meech. So let's go a week here, see what transpires, if we can get some wins on the board. That would be very nice with these new lines, and Askarov has been injured with a bruised foot. His estimated return is about a month away. That's bad. We need to make some changes. All right, so we're going to go with Milich and Gunderson. Now, Alex did say to uh, give Canzanello or Riley the chance. And here's what I'm going to say. Clifford Riley is... Uh, waiver eligible. So I don't want to bring him up. He's medium elite. He's only 24 years old, which is kind of weird why he hasn't grown. But he's, he's a medium elite player. I'm not bringing him up just to send him down so that he can... Or, you know, if we don't send him down, he's just going to sit on the bench for the rest of his this year. I do not want that to happen. And then Canzanello, 69 overall, simply put, is just not good enough to play in the NHL. He has a 898 save percentage in the AHL. So we don't want to expose him to NHL quality. So we're going to go with Milich and Gunderson here. Um, I know it's not exactly what, what Alex wanted, but uh, I think it's what's going to happen here. 11-2 victory there after a 2-1 loss. So let's get this... Uh, let's get on a wing train here, 
boys. Come on now. 5-4 victory. Okay, there's two in a row. Let's keep it rolling now, boys. Let's go for another couple. Askarov should be back fairly soon. And there, Stefan Kreitzer has now been injured with an injured back until February 3rd. Okay, it's not too long away. We can just... Uh, do we have a replacement? I think we do. Okay, hang on. Stop the sim. Stop the sim. Oh my gosh, it accidentally simulated a couple of games because I clicked the wrong button. So we get we get two wins there. Um, the guy who I brought up is uh, actually... Well, yeah, because I was going through waivers and things like this, so so I actually didn't even put him in. I actually threw in... Uh, who did I throw in? Um, Philip Hollander, I think, on defense, which is not going to stand, even though we did just win uh, a game. He was a minus one. He is not staying there. Stefan Kreitzer is now almost back, so he did all that for nothing. But Oliver Bonk's going to get his chance to uh, step into the lineup here as a zero. We'll see what he does with Boris Nikulin for probably only one game, maybe not even one game. Um, let me just see. All right, so it looks like Bonk gets the chance to play one game. Luckily, we have a bit of a, uh, we have the all-star break here. So hopefully Askarov can be ready for our next game up against Detroit. Stefan Kretzer's fully back. Let me do the lines. So Oliver Bonk is waiver eligible. I'm not sure if anybody will pick him up, but if they do, not a big deal here. N nobody picks him up. Good. So let me do the lines in the AHL now. It's a whole thing. Okay, and that was a 4-2 win up against the Minnesota Wild. So for the Detroit game, I have a feeling Askarov's going to be fully back, and he is. So once again, I have to do the lines now. All right, so Milic played five games. He actually looks incredible. Five games, five wins, 933 save percentage, 2.20 goals against average. I'm going to keep Milic in there for a couple of games. I know Alex is not going to be too happy about it, but Milic is being a monster. Um... Yeah, I'm going to keep him in there for, for just a few games, you know. We'll just keep him in for like a week, see if he plays another game. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. So Detroit, LA, and LA. Do we get any wins? Lost to Detroit, lost to LA. Nice. And then a win to LA. What's our pace? We only have 37 wins. It seems like we've really fallen off our 60-win uh, pace, unfortunately, after these two losses in a row here. We're definitely not shooting at that same pace. Um Hopefully we can turn that around real quick. Let's see. Who should we watch before the deadline? Let's... We could watch Florida. Okay, St. Louis is a pretty good team. Let's watch the St. Louis game here. Simulate a couple more games. Carolina, that's a loss. Montreal, that's a loss. Okay, so as soon as we... Uh, as soon as we have... Um, Yaroslav Askarov in the net, we just lose games, huh? That's absolutely ridiculous. Okay. All right, so Dane Matheson was a plus nine. What is he now? He's a plus 18 now, but only 25 goals. He had 20 at the halfway mark, so he's not exactly scoring much more. And Brendan Meech is now a plus five. He was a plus 11 before. So they're a mi they're, this third line is being a minus with Brendan Meech there instead of with Dane Matheson. But Dane Matheson is playing well. Uh, I think I'm going to go back to the other lines, man. They were they were doing better. The other lines were doing much better. And Askarov, your numbers are coming down. Milic, he did play another game, and he had a decent save percentage. We're going to go back to Torsten Gunderson, though, because I don't know what the heck is going on. I barely made any changes, and of course, now the team is playing bad. We're like under 500 since I started the video, despite having the exact same lines, pretty much. So I don't understand that. We're going to go back to the, other, the lines that got us 31 wins in 41 games. And uh, we'll see if we can uh, progress on a better pace this way, huh? So we're up against the St. Louis Blues. Let's go in and watch the game. They are a pretty good team. They are only 11 points behind us, which is a lot, but we're also a great team right now. So let's get a win here, boys. This would be great for our confidence. Let's move it forward. First period, that's one nothing for us. William Eklund on Jake Ottinger. Beautiful start. Second period now, that's going to remain one to nothing. as St. Louis has a power play going into the third, and Robert Thomas is going to score on Yaroslav Askarov. Can we get anything on our power play now? No, we cannot. And then Lati also scores even strength on Askarov, and we blow a lead in the third period once again for like the hundredth time in this series. Not really that surprised by it anymore. Can we get a goal here late? Tie it up? Go to overtime, please? Are you joking me, bro? This guy makes 37 saves on 38 shots? That's ridiculous. Jake Ottinger, what a monster out there. Askarov had a great game as well, 29 saves, but uh, the boys just aren't showing up right now. What is going on? We're on like a four-game losing streak, five-game losing streak, something like that. No, only a three-game losing streak, but it feels like way more. Oh my goodness, this is bad. This is really bad here. We're going to go two games at a time. Why are we playing so bad? Svensson's back. He had a minor injury. There's a win and then a win. Okay, it's the two-game-at-a-time strategy, I guess, huh? When you go two games, you start winning. But uh, if you go more than that, you lose. Huh? Yeah, of course. Okay, so I'm just going to simulate two games at a time. That's the strat. Um, 
when you simulate two games at a time, you go four, you get four straight. Before that, you're uh, you're losing games. So I don't know what it is, man. EA Voodoo. I don't know. Superstitions out the wazoo. There it is again. Three two win, and we are now on a five game winning streak. Beautiful. We are the second best team in the league. Um, uh, game against Minnesota at the trade deadline. I'm probably just gonna be looking for maybe a depth player, a depth defenseman or something like that, a left handed depth defenseman. But I'm not really married to anything, obviously. First period is gonna be two to two. It's Hater that scores, but then Meech and Dowd both get goals of their own. The second line clicking well, and then Deverer scores on uh, Yaroslav Askarov. Second period now three to two, and that's three goals on 17 shots. That is unfortunate. Can we make a comeback now? We're down by one in the third period. Can we make the comeback this time? I don't know. Probably not, but uh, we will find out. We need a power play or something, refs. Give us something. There's Brennan Meech. He's going to score even strength. Beautiful. Tie us up at three. A nice five minutes left. Four minutes, three minutes. Do we have a hero? A late hero? No, we do not. We're going to go to overtime. And in overtime, that's okay. We're going to go to shootout now. Shootout. Of course, we lose in shootout. Elliot Patrick scores, but Kaprasov and Rossi both score to give them the shootout victory. And the three stars of the night are Meech, Dowd, and Hayter. Unfortunately, our three stars were not quite good enough to get us across the finish line. All right, so it's trade deadline time. I'm just going to look for a depth player, a depth defenseman. Not, not anybody crazy, just a big guy, physical guy who's going to hit, you know, things like that. But not anybody crazy. We don't need to make any big moves or anything like that. So I'm just going to find a team that's a bad team, a seller that wants to trade a defenseman. And we'll go from there. All right, guys, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to pick up Thomas Harley. He's on a big deal. The Islanders want to trade him. I think a third arm pick is more than fair. I could give them a defenseman as well. Let me see. Do we have anybody we could dump out? Now, you know what? I'm just going to give them a, a, a third round pick for Thomas Harley. I think this is fair. The value looks pretty fair um, in our favor. And um, I would even say we could probably get Harley for a fourth or a fifth. Um, but I think a third makes most sense. He's not the Thomas Harley of the real world. He's an 81 overall. Thomas Harley in next game, probably going to be like 85, 86. If I had to take a guess at what the develop development team is thinking over there. But very serviceable defender 86 defensive awareness good shot blocking good stick checking although nothing crazy pretty baseline decent everywhere but not amazing at anything just the type of player that we need to fill in um, if he wants to be a reliable guy 85 offense awareness so he can knows what he's doing getting that puck out of the zone at least and he's got good shot power he's also big with decent physical so again he's not going to light the world on fire but He's trustable back there, so let's uh, see if this goes through, and it would go through. We'd have to move down Thomas Milich, which I'm okay with, so uh, thank you very much, New York Islanders. We consider it a done deal. So do we. Thank you for your service there, and a good trade, a fair trade, I would say. So now we're going to advance one more day, see what happened at the trade deadline, but we are not going into it because I do not need to make any moves. This team is great. I have faith in this team. I have confidence. I think we can really make a run with these core guys. So we see Tampa Bay acquires Riley Height again. I wish I could click on these names and see who these guys are, but a center traded for two centers there. So Washington picks up two centers. I'm assuming these are mostly just prospects here. Uh, Philadelphia gets Mark LeBlanc and Riker Evans. I know who Riker Evans is, but uh, they trade away Sven Paulson and Elvin Shingtime. Again, don't know these guys. Uh, a second and a third go to Washington for Kanolochuk, a sixth and Kevin LeBlanc. Okay, fair enough. I think... I think Kanolachuk is like a decent goalie. I don't know how if I'm saying his name right. I'm probably not. Colorado gets Philip Broberg. Okay, a defenseman going to Colorado over there. Just picks exchanging between Florida and Detroit. Uh, Pittsburgh picks up a centerman. Hopefully that's like a fourth line center because they really need that. Uh, Sachin goes to Florida and Jameson Reese both go to Florida um, in exchange for uh, a second and Jake Lyon. Okay, and then Boston picks up a left winger and a defenseman for Isaac Lindstrom, who goes back to Anaheim. Okay, Bedrick Lindner and goalie Ivan Bobrovsky, and not Sergei Bobrovsky, both uh, go to Minnesota. And then Seattle picks up a third and Cole Sillinger. So Cole Sillinger is back in Seattle. Interesting that we see Isaac Lindstrom go back to his old team. Cole Sillinger goes back to his old team. And then uh, Gilbert Sievret and Gabriel Yang go to Columbus Blue Jackets. And the Tampa Bay Lightning pick up Norton, a fourth and a sixth round pick from Columbus. So I basically have no idea what happened at the deadline. Um, just a bunch of random moves. I don't think anything massive have happened because there were no blockbuster trades so uh yeah we're just going to continue as if 
you know, nothing really happened there. And uh, we're going to keep going two games at a time, see where that lands us, see if we can uh, get, keep staying in the win column here we're in our calendar sim. It's an overtime loss followed by a regulation loss. Of course, this is the classic um, after the trade deadline slump. So let, let, let's break out of it here, boys, with these next two games. The Rangers, that's going to be a win, a loss to Nashville, unfortunate. Let's go another two games here. Should we see anybody? I guess... Uh, we could we could see um uh, uh what what's his name we could see Rocky Bomek we'll go we'll go watch Rocky Bomek I think we've already seen him um but uh, hey this time in his new building and now we are on a huge huge losing streak Aiden Stempniak has been injured and my entire world seems like it's falling apart love it. Okay, so these are what the lines are going to look like. We're going with two, two right-handed defensemen on the first line, Corbin Mills and Will Hoffman. Second line is going to be Owen Power, Stefan Kreitzer. Third line is going to be Thomas Harley and Boris Nakulin. It's really about the only thing we can do. Um, I'm really unfortunate that Aiden Stempniak goes down. Um, I don't know what's going on with the team right now. We can't seem to buy a game. Uh, we're trying to buy out the refs. Look at this. Three in a row losses. You know what? I'm just going to jump in. Maybe the maybe the, the real-time sim is going to help us out a bit more. I don't understand what's going on here. Um, we're somehow still first in the league, even though we should not be anymore. And we're only like eight points ahead of the Coyotes. We're only five points ahead of the Stars. We've really fallen from grace here, which is not a surprise because... I've rarely ever seen anybody have a 60-win season in an EA sports simulation. I know it can happen, obviously, and we only, we should have done it this year. But, uh, you know, as soon as that new session starts, EA, they roll the dice once again. And now, of course, we are a horrible team. So, uh, first period goes even. Corbin Mill scores shorthanded, and Matthew Barzell scores on Yaroslav Askarov. Second period now, that's going to be 3-2 in our favorite. Elliot Patrick and Howard Quenville both score. Arthur Kaliev uh, tries to even things up, but he is still down by one as we enter the third period can we get a power play goal of course we cannot i'll check our stats and things like that at the end of the year we should still be fine for a playoff spot boys um but yeah pretty disappointed in the second half of the season but it really does feel like as soon as you end a session like as soon as i walk away from my my recording um and then i start it back up a couple of days later of course we're never going to simulate the same it's happened on countless occasions where we have a great start to the year and then i come back maybe this is just tinfoil hat theory but i come back later and of course we do not simulate the same whatsoever so it's pretty disappointing but what are you gonna do as we enter the overtime period and we lose nice so the losing streak continues i'm gonna throw torsten gun Anderson in the net for a game change it up maybe that'll help probably it won't who knows I don't understand what's going on I'm gonna throw Dane Matheson back up to the second line I'm just gonna make random changes because we are simulating like a bunch of bums all of a sudden fourth lines plus eight the third line, uh, they're, they're plus, uh, Shane Pinto's plus 11, Nico Tukio's plus 5, Dane Matheson is still plus 15, and uh, Brennan Meech only is plus 4, so he's dropped one overall. I mean, uh, the first line's plus 30. I don't get why we're not a good team, man. I mean, mean, we are a good team, but I don't get why we're simulating so poorly right now. It doesn't make sense to me. What's Thomas Harley done in his, what did he do in that one game? He was a minus 1, all right, whatever. That's okay. Um, obviously, still got to get the groove of things, figure some stuff out. Torsten Gunderson's in the net for this game. I switched him up there. Oh my goodness, the menus can't keep up. So let's see if we can get a win here on the calendar simulation. It really does feel like a flip just switches after the trade deadline, and all of a sudden we can't win any games, man. I don't understand it. New Jersey, that's a 3-1 win. Nice. And then Arizona, that's a 4-3 loss. Of course it is. I don't need Gustav Lindstrom. He's a 77 overall. No thank you there. Uh, Aiden Stempniak is fully back. Let's get him back into the lineup. Okay, stopping the sim here as we enter the next couple of games. Aiden Stemniak back on the first line, first power play, penalty kill, all that stuff. So do not fret there, boys. Chicago and Vancouver are our next games, and we lose and then win one, lose one, win one. We are clinched the playoffs, um, but I am not happy at all, if you guys couldn't tell, with our last, like, 10 games or so. This, this last month here has been pretty brutal. So, um... I don't know what changes I should make. We've got Dane Matheson on the second line, and we're playing a little better than when we didn't. Okay, there's a 5-3 win. St. Louis, was that a win? I think it was a loss. 6-2 loss. Beautiful. So, well, we really can't keep the puck out of the net, huh? We were the th third best defensive team in uh, the league, and uh, six goals against, four goals against, seven goals against, four goals against, five goals against, five goals against, four, five, I mean... There's only been a couple of good defensive performances. Even this one, a 5-3 win, is not a great defensive performance. I don't understand what the heck is going wrong here. We're going to watch the Toronto game just because I'm a real-life Sens fan, so it's always nice to put a beating on the Toronto Maple Leafs if we can. But we obviously can't. We uh, lost two straight there. 
I mean, this is just unbelievable, man. We went from the best team pretty much not even close in the NHL to uh, we're like in the middle of the pack now. I, dude, I don't understand the EA simulation. First period's going to end 3-1 for Toronto because of course it will. Second period now, 4-2. All right, fair enough. And the third period's underway. Will we be able to come back, boys? Let's find out. Yeah. I have no idea what's going on. Maybe I should make some line changes, uh, like like really make line changes and bring in... Uh, oh my gosh, we actually made a comeback. Holy cow, tied up 4-4. Um, switch around the Rhines a lot, go Dane Matheson on the first line, separate those three guys because they have a great plus minus, obviously, and they're... Oh my, okay, there we go. There's a 5-4 victory. Yes, it is, and it's a come-from-behind victory in the third period, which is very nice to see. But yeah, maybe I switch up the first line, change some things around because... This has not been uh, an, an inspiring performance from our boys whatsoever here in the month of uh, of March and even in April so far. Like, but the crazy thing is, is that I look at these these lines and like Howard Quenville has 70 points, uh, Dane Matheson only 42, but he has 31 goals. Eric Dowd has like 76 points or something crazy like that. Um, we go to the third line now. Nico Tukio on the third line has 47 points. Like these guys are playing great. They're producing. I, I just don't get why we're not winning games. It just doesn't make sense to me. I said, like, I could go Dane Matheson up to the first line, Elliot Patrick to the second line. I could go with Howard Quenville up to the first line. But, like, what's the point? Like, what are we... Uh, like, we're a good team. I, we're just not playing well. We're not simulating well. I know that's such a weird thing to say, but, it, like, it really feels... I don't know. It just feels like the simulation has decided it's not our time right now for some reason. So we'll go back with Brendan Meech there. I don't know. These were the exact lines that we had when we went 31, 40, and 2, or whatever it was, 31, 40, and 6, whatever whatever the heck it was, 30, 31, 10, and or whatever, whatever. You guys know what I'm saying. These are the exact lines we had. Watch, we're going to go like, we're going to have like a 300 win percentage. I don't understand it, man. I don't, I don't get what the heck is going on here. We'll obviously watch the last game of the season as always. We have Brendan Meech back up to the second line. Uh, one nothing loss, 2-1 loss. And now we are no longer the leaders of our division. What a fall from grace this has been. This has been an absolute disaster of a second half of the season. Let's just get out of here, bro. I don't even... Gosh, let's just forget about it. 4-1 loss. Lose again. 6-1 loss. 10-3 win. I mean, we're all over the place. It's so ridiculous. Um, and it looks like we're probably going to play the Coyotes in round one once again which is going to be disastrous probably once again. But we finish the season off against Nashville here. First period, that's going to be 1-1. One one. Elliot Patrick scores on the power play. Raphael Lavoie scores on Torsten Gunderson, who's ending the season off. Sure, why not? Second period now, 3-3. Three three. Okay, Matt Svensson and Corbin Mills both score for us. And the third period is underway, and we give them a power play opportunity that they do not capitalize on, uh, on us with. Um, Torsten there being able to lock the door. We can't score on our power play opportunity. That's okay. Can we get an even strength one? Yes, we can. It's Brendan Meech. I feel like Brendan Meech is always scoring in the slow sim which I love to see on Hewitt. What a name, Hewitt, J. Hewitt, Jonah Hewitt. I'm going to call it right now. But there it is, a 4-3 victory to end things off. At least we end on a bit of a high note. Elliot Patrick with two points. Corbin Mills with two points. William Eklund with two points. So the first line, I'm going to assume the first line really saved us, saved our bacon out there. Um, everybody's played 82 games. We end with 49 wins. So we were on pace to end with 62 wins on the season. And we end with 49, an absolute disaster. There's a couple of other four-letter words that I want to say instead of disaster, um, which is not a four-letter word, in case you guys were wondering. But no, this, oh my god, this is this has been uh, atrocious. There's really no other way to say it. We end up finishing fifth in the league, which is not bad, but... We were by far the best team in the first half of the season. Actually, we weren't by far. There were two teams on pace for 60 wins. Neither of us got there. I think it was us and Anaheim. Um, neither of us got there. We didn't even get to 50, unfortunately. 49, 25, and 8. Not bad. Good for fifth place. Like, if I was just looking at this um, and I didn't have the, uh, the results of the first video, I'd be like, oh, that's good. That's pretty good. You know, nothing really to... To worry about too much that's, that's a pretty good season and it is a pretty good season 3.78 goals four per game that's pretty good it's not the like 4.6 that we had at the start of the episode at the start of this episode or i don't remember what it was but four point something for sure and then what is this yeah 3.01 has been uh, really been coming down we're still the fifth 
best defensive team, but we were the third best defensive team a while ago, and Montreal and Anaheim have still reclaimed or still had their, uh, their, their title as the best two defensive teams in the league. Dallas at number three. So yeah, we really fell off defensively. We're just, I, I don't know why. We just didn't care, I guess. I don't, I don't really understand. Um, power play, though, is pretty good. It's seventh best in the league. It will take that. And penalty kill went up as well, 83%. That is going to be eighth best in the league. So our special teams got better, but our record got much worse. So bizarre. I don't understand this at all. Our home record, we are the best, are the we're tied for the best home team in the league at the start of this episode we only had two losses at home we had a regulation loss and an overtime loss um our away record though not fantastic at 21 what was it 21 16 and something uh 16 and 6 or something like that i don't really know uh where are we here 21 16 and 4 yeah not great 3 5 and 2 in our last 10 yeah let's not let's not look at that boys we're into the playoffs all right that's the only thing that matters we got into the playoffs we don't know who we're facing yet. I think we, we might be able to figure it out, but I'm not going to take a look at that quite yet. I think it might be Arizona, but uh, that's for next episode. But we're in the playoffs. Anything can happen when you're in the playoffs. I still think we have a really good team. We just fell asleep at the wheel a little bit there in the second half of the season. And that is not, there's nothing more evident than that than the fact that we only have two point per game players. You know... William Eklund at the start of this video was on pace for 50. Elliot Patrick was on pace for like high 90s, maybe mid 90s. Eric Dowd was on pace for to be a point per game player. Matt Svensson was above point per game player as well. Um, so a bit disappointing to see the least. Corbin Mills has really climbed back. Oh my gosh, 63 points for Corbin Mills. What a uh, season this year for him. Howard Quenville with 62 was pretty good as well. I mean, he's a sophomore. Getting 62 points as a sophomore on the second line is great. I'll take that. Aiden Stempniak with 62 is amazing. William Hoffman with 55 points. That's a new career high for the kid. Love to see it. He's thriving out here. Nico Tukio had 51 points. Hopefully that's good enough for the Calder. I think that um, actually eclipses what he was supposed to do. I think he was only on pace for like... I don't know, only on pace for maybe in the mid-40s or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. Brennan Meech, 49 points as a rookie, is great. Centering the second line, playing a little third line time as well, but great stuff from him. And then Dane Matheson with 46 and 35 goals from Dane Matheson. He becomes our leading goal scorer this year. So Elliot Patrick really fell off in the goal department, only shooting 10% for Elliot Patrick, but he did have 339 shots. So we can trust this guy to put the puck on the net. You know, the more he puts it on the net, the more likely he is to score. So Elliot Patrick, he just had a bit of a down shoot year this year but still is that five star shooting uh we still know that he is destined for good things with us and he already has done great things with us so you know not going to be too mad at him there Shane Pinto 35 points he was on pace for 41 42 something like that so a little disappointing but uh not the end of the world for our third line center Owen Power with 29 is fine Colby Stoll with 25 is great that's pretty good for a fourth liner same thing with Wyatt Johnson 25 beautiful Dane Brookbank in his rookie season I think yes his rookie season 21 points as a fourth liner plus five as well that would be Rocky Bomek, man. That would basically be the same thing Rocky Bomek would bring as a fourth liner. So not mad at uh, Brookbank whatsoever. Stefan Kreitzer, plus 12, 11 points. Nice. Uh, Boris and Nikulin, 10 points, plus 8. So these guys, I think it might have been these guys in the last, the last like, 20 or so games. Maybe they're, I feel like their plus minus really fell off. So... I guess I could have made a change like that, but Thomas Harley was also like a minus three, minus four with us, so I don't know. Oh, no, minus two, sorry, but still, the point still stands. Philip Hollander played one game with us there. Okay, what did our goalies do? Because I feel like this really fell down massively. Yes, it did. Uh, Askarov only a 901 save percentage, 2.98 goals against average, and then Torsten Gunnarsson, 900 save percentage, 2.97. At the start of the year, Askarov was amazing putting up like a 920 save percentage and like a 2.7 or 2.8 goals against average he was amazing so a bit disappointing in that maybe i should have given millich some more starts but uh i don't know i, I didn't want to make alex too angry also we want to give some starts to gunderson who's a medium elite guy I don't know, man. It's just a, it was just a clus, it was just a big mess, I should say, in the second half of the season. I don't really know. But looking at the entire league, and look at the scoring just drops down after the first half of the season. 
I don't understand why. Connor Bedard's going to win his first uh, scoring title, I think, in his career with this one, I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, there, there were people on pace for like 120 points, 130 points, uh, and they only end up with 100. I don't get why at the second half of the season, the scoring just drops considerably. It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, Francisco Gordon is here. Francisco Gordon, wow, what a, what a story for Francisco Gordon, who was only like an 85 overall buried on Arizona's fourth line a couple of years ago. He goes to uh, Anaheim and he scores 100 points. Amazing story for him. Nice. And he's a plus 68. Oh my God. So let's watch out for those Anaheim Ducks there, boys. They can keep that puck out of the net and uh, score at will, it feels like. Braden Point, 39-year-old Braden Point's up here. Uh, Svechnikov, Leo Carlson, Tanner Howe, the Ottawa boys getting it done. Gary McCarty playing with Bedard, most likely. Lucas Raymond, Adam Benak, Mason McTavish, Jaden Almond, of course, our good buddy. Jason Robertson, Zach Benson, Trevor Zegras. Okay, basically all of the names that we know and love of us at Alan Cole. Perfetti, Cole Perfetti with 88 points in 81 games on a, on a Baron Pittsburgh team. Love to see that for Cole Perfetti. Only shooting 9% as well. Beautiful stuff. Great job, Cole. Good stuff for you. What about defensively now? Uh, oh my goodness. Pavel Menchikov and Aaron Kivihar, you overtake uh, Kale McCarr and Quinn Hughes. Uh, Corbin Mills becomes the fourth best defenseman in this year's uh, simulation here. But Menchikov probably going to win that. Oh my god. I have never seen numbers like this. Menchikov probably going to win the Norris Trophy. Plus 71. I have never seen a plus 71 in my life. What the heck, bro? This, oh my god, he's like a plus player every single game. That's ridiculous. 90 overall. His stats look basically the same as all the rest, but Anaheim is just a dominant team, I guess. That's insane, man. That's so insane. I don't know. Wow, congratulations, Pavel Menchikov on the Norris Trophy. Just give it to him right now. Plus 71 and 68 points? Yeah. But, you know, we do see Corbin Mills up here who had an amazing season. Plus 32 for him. We see uh, Aiden Stempniak is here. Plus 31 for him. So these two guys, you know, they're up there as one of the best defensive pairings. But let me just take a look at plus minus only. Menchikov and Drysdale are the best. They're the best duo of all time. I, it, it must be. Don't tell me. Don't tell me, game. Of course. Oh my god. Joel Shepard, the defensive defenseman, goes to Dallas after he spent... How many years with us did he spend? He spent, what? What is this? Uh, one, two, three, three and a half years with us, not getting more than 18 points in a season. Okay. Defensive defenseman, bear in mind. And he goes to Dallas after being in LA. He goes back to Dallas, and he's a plus 45, which is insane in its own, but he scores 52 points. 52 points. He's getting first line. He got first line time with us as well. He's getting 52 points as a defensive defenseman in Dallas, wearing number 87. I don't understand this game, boys. I do not understand this game. Um, yeah, I don't know. I would say we're up there as one of the best, uh, one of the best uh, lines in uh, one of the best defensive lines in the game here. 63 points, 62 points. Menchikov had 68. Drysdale had 49. But they are obviously the best with like plus 70s. That's ridiculous, dude. Oh my god. Okay, looking at goalies now, we see Sebastian Kosa, of course, going to win the Vezina because Anaheim is just going to clean up all the awards. It feels like Sharkov is here. Scott Carter, former Winnipeg Jets prospect. Um, Blake Bertram, Adam Rasmussen, Matthew Doherty, Hugo Allenfeld, Matteo Hecht, former uh, Winnipeg Jets prospect as well. And then there's Askarov, but Askarov's numbers compared to all these guys look pretty rough. So, a bit disappointed in that. Rookie skaters, we could have a Calder Trophy here. Nico Tukio, I'm looking at you. Thane Matheson maybe might get it. Let's see who's it going to. Oh, that's devastating. Rene Devro. I don't know. Oh my god, he's a medium franchise player, though. 92 overall medium franchise. He had 131 penalty minutes. Good lord, this guy can't stay out of the box. So, fair enough. He's a franchise player. He's going to get the nod, most likely. Although, I feel like you could make a... I feel like you could make an argument for Dane with 35 goals. That's pretty crazy. But no, probably going to go to Rene Devereau, which is okay. I think Eric Dowd won it last year, didn't he? Or Howard Quenville or something? I think we won it last year. I'm not sure who it was. But yeah, probably going to go to Devereau there as the medium franchise guy. And goal, actually, it, you know what? It could go to Cody Sotheby. 9-17 save percentage, 2.63 goals against average. is pretty much unheard of. Five shutouts as well, 32-11-3. 
it could very well go to Cody Sotheby of the Montreal Canadiens here. That's a, those are crazy numbers. It could also go to Matt's Lungfist here, 9-12, save percentage 2.89 goals against. There's a real race for the Calder Trophy between, uh, sorry, oh, good lord, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, real race for the Calder Trophy here between uh, Devro, um, Nico Tukio, maybe Dane Matheson, but probably just Devro, Nico Tukio, and uh, and these two goalies. That's a that's a great rookie class. That is a fantastic rookie class. The class of 2035 looks amazing. All right, let's take a look at our old friends now. Going to the Buffalo Sabres, how did Melvin Barker finish with 82 points on the season? Okay, he was, I don't remember what he was on pace for, but it was above point per game. He finishes at point per game with 45 goals, so... Amazing goal scorer, obviously we know that. Only an 84 overall as well. The Buffalo Sabres are getting a huge bang for their buck. So they're, they're going to absolutely love the fact that they swooped Melvin Barker from us. Congratulations to you, Melvin. Also, Liam Carlson looks like he kind of turned some things around. Plus, uh, he got 50 points on the year for himself. Looking at uh, his career numbers. Also, crazy comment. I'm not sure if I talked about this in the last one or if it got brought up, but... Before um, I we started the simulation of these the uh, these uh, these points in these this episode here, uh, Corbin Mills and uh, Liam Carlson I think were tied in points and they had like three games played separating them. So the the career trajectory of these two guys lives on. Fifty points for him this year, drop down from his seventy of last year, um, but it's better than what he did with us. So uh, good stuff for you, Liam Carlson. His stats still look good as ever. Let's take a look at where Corbin Mills is in his career. So Liam Carlson has 253 points. Corbin Mills had a little bit of a better season, and he's up to 301 points. Wow, so he's 50 points ahead. Um, no, it wouldn't have been Corbin Mills. Who was it? It was... Ah, uh, wait, who, who, who is the, uh, who's the other guy? I don't remember. Was it maybe Aiden Stemniak? I don't know. But there was, there was something like that. There was some, there was some comment that, that Alex made that was talking to me about statistics. Anyways, you guys go, go down and, and find it. Um, but I, oh, it couldn't have been Corbin Mills because Corbin Mills has been in the league for a lot longer. Maybe was it Will Hoffman? I don't remember. I don't remember, man. All right, so looking at the new Jersey Devils here, Rocky Bomek puts up 53 points. Love it, kid. Great job. His career high um, since he scored 106 in the USA Development Center. He's a minus four, but that's okay. He's just five-star defense, five-star physical, four-star senses, five-star puck skills, and he got 38 assists to boot for it. So great job, Rocky. Take a look at Pittsburgh. We obviously know that Cole Perfetti out here did his thing. Unfortunately, Pittsburgh was a good team. I forgot that we have their first round pick this year, so we can see where they ended up in the in the year. Somehow, they're a good team, even though they have minus 16, minus 18, minus 15, <sighs> minus 6, minus 9, minus 19, minus 12, minus 4. All their guys are minus, and yet they made the playoffs somehow. I don't understand it, man. I do not understand it at all. Tampa Bay, let's see. Sam Kennedy finished with 77 points, minus 8. Tough season from him. Not the worst season of his career. Actually, one of the better seasons that he's had in recent memory here. But only 27 goals. You'd love to see him get to 30. 50 assists, though, is quite good. So uh, we want to see him reach his next gear and the next couple of seasons. But alas, we will find out who we are playing in the playoffs here. Let me just check. Pittsburgh, they did end up making the playoffs just barely. So congrats to them. But who will we face in the playoffs in round number one? It's going to be... Oh, brother. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, it was a fun season. Can I just say that? It was a fun season, boys. Uh, one of the better seasons of our uh, simulation. Actually, I don't know if it is, statistically speaking. But uh, unfortunately, this man's going to dump us in the first round like he's done on multiple occasions before. So Bedard, McCarty, and Benek, these guys were one of the best lines in hockey. Bedard, obviously, the leading point scorer in the entire league this year. So that's terrifying, but their second line doesn't look great. Third line doesn't look that great either, and fourth line looks bad. So, I mean, I, I'm not going to get my hopes up here. Their defense doesn't look good either, and then their goalie is fine, but our goalie obviously looks a little better. Look, at the end of the day with these Chicago Blackhawks, it doesn't matter what their overalls are. They're going to 
put in a fight, but we're not going to go down without a fight either, okay? It's going to be a brawl. We're, we're in the back streets. We're in an alley in New York City just throwing hands with each other, even though these games are taking place in Winnipeg and Chicago. doesn't matter. We traveled to New York just to fight these guys in the back alleys, all right, where nobody's going to recognize us. It's going to be an absolute brawl out there. A fist fight, you know, channel back to the, the 80s and, and 70s and 60s, or not 60s, but like the 80s, 90s, early 2000s style of hockey is what's going to be thrown out on the ice. I'm going to make sure each and every night these guys are giving their body, they're laying down, they're blocking shots, they're finishing every single check, okay? We're not going to go out lightly. We're going to take these guys as far as they're willing to go. We're going to bring them into deep waters and wa make them swim, all right? And if they can't, well, they're going to find that out really soon being on the ice with us. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one, even though it was a bit of a lackluster one. Not many moves happen, just watching us lose game after game after game. But nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed your time here. And uh, I hope you enjoy your time browsing YouTube and doing whatever mindless scroll scrolling that you got to do to pass the time. But anyways, uh, have a great rest of your day, everybody. Like, comment, subscribe. New videos come out Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day. Peace out.